Hello, this is Tiger Slash the Second, and today we're going to be talking about this. This is one of my favorite models, and you might not recognize it at first, but this is a kit-bashed Beastmaster that I made. Um, it might not look like a Beastmaster, it might look like a Hellion mixed with a Scourge. And you would be right, that's exactly what I did. The actual uh, Beastmaster model itself is made out of resin, and is rather expensive, even for a Games Workshop model. So, having some extra Hellions and some extra Scourges laying around, I decided to make my own. Uh, as usual, this video is going to be broken into three parts. First, talking about the model, then talking about the actual unit itself, and then talking about strategies involving the unit. So let's start off with the model. Uh, the top bit is kit bashed from a Scourge, as you can see. Uh, and the reason I chose a Scourge was because I primarily use Razorwing Flocks in my army. So I figured having a Beastmaster that used Razorwing Flock look-alike pieces, you know, um, but it would fit with the theme. The, the, the lore behind the Beastmaster is that they're supposed to wear a mask that is representative of the beasts of the warp that they're trying to tame. And, and the Beastmaster that Games Workshop sells comes with a mask that resembles a Chimera. I don't have Chimeras. I would run them if I had them, but I don't have any. I have primarily Razorwing Flocks. So this made a lot more sense to me. He's got his, his Agonizer and his, his little pistol. Uh, her, really. Uh, although, canonically, the Beastmasters are supposed to be um, like a male like fraternity, I think. And riding on a Hellion Skyboard. Oh, just the bottom half is a Hellion. Top half is a Scourge. And I just painted it up a bit. As for the actual unit itself, uh, it's not too impressive on paper. You got toughness 3, you got 3 wounds, and uh, you got 2 shots at 18 inch range of poison. It can take the agonizer from the codex, and it can also take the beastmaster scourge, which is basically just a plus 1 strength weapon, and he gets 3 attacks. Overall, um, very weak. Uh, very susceptible to damage, only a 5-up save. But, the Beastmaster is a character for less than 40 points. That means that you have something that can sit on an objective on a back line that can't be shot unless it's the closest thing. Beastmasters are very, very useful for holding back line objectives because they simply can't be targeted and they're not really a threat, so most opponents will ignore them. It takes a lot of effort to get rid of one of these things if it's sitting on a back objective and you've got your army up on the front lines because that means dedicating time and effort to trying to take it out. Now, we've seen Vindicare Assassins get their upgrades in the recent White Dwarf, so this might not be a viable strategy much longer. Especially if they're modeled as flamboyantly as this one, it's going to be difficult to get it um, hidden behind terrain. But for a typical Beastmaster on a skyboard, if you were using the Games Workshop model or something similar, it is you know perfectly feasible to simply hide in terrain out of line of sight, and uh, and bank on your your four up in cover save, uh, getting you through the worst of it, at least until the later turns, or unless your opponent decides to dedicate a deep strike to actually taking it out. Now what about the tactics for this guy? The Beastmaster is necessary in a matched playlist in order to bring a beast unit. That means if you want to use any Claude Fiends, any Chimeras, or any Razorwing Flocks, a Beastmaster must be included in your army. In the detachment, specifically. Now in addition to this, you can't bring any beasts um, that fill slots. The beasts actually are slotless so long as there is a Beastmaster in your army. So you can't bring beasts unless there is a Beastmaster, and if there's a Beastmaster, those beasts don't take up any slots in your detachment. This is a bad thing in my opinion because sometimes you really need to fill out those fast attack slots and you don't necessarily want to bring a whole bunch of Hellions or Reavers or Scourges. Sometimes, you know, having some Chimeras would be nice. However, it can also work to your advantage. For instance, the Beastmaster is an elite unit, and it is rather cheap. It's very easy to fit it inside of something like a Supreme Command or inside of a patrol. 
This could be handy if you're doing something like a supreme command attachment where you just need some extra chaff in there and you don't want to fork out all of the points for witches or racks. You have access to chimeras and, uh, and razorwing flocks with a beastmaster included in the elite slides. Very easy. If you're running a Yanari Supreme Command, the same thing applies. Also, consider the fact that Harlequins and Eldar don't really have really great screening units. They have Guardians, but Razorwing Flocks are, in my opinion, one of the best screening units in the Eldar family right now. For adding an Auxiliary Detachment for one command point, you can bring in a Beastmaster, which, rules as written, allows you to bring as many units of beasts as you want. So, you could bring a single Beastmaster for a command point, and suddenly your Harlequin list has access to 36 Razorwing Flocks. Having Razorwing Flocks to soak up smites in an in a, in a army of Harlequins would be fantastic. That would be a great addition, in my opinion. Or consider having Razorwing Flocks available if you were running, say, Wraith Blades, which seem to be in vogue right now. Something to eat up all those smites, something to eat up all those mortal wounds as your Wraith Blades slowly get to the fight. So these are just a few suggestions, some things that I've seen as I've played the game that, you know, when I'm playing these armies, man, I really miss those Razorwing Flocks that I have in my Dark Eldar list. Well, this is an easy way to get those. It's uh, it, one an auxiliary detachment of just a Beastmaster, get as much chaff as you need, all those, all those fast attack beast slots that you want. So these are just a few suggestions on how to run this unit. As you can probably tell from my previous videos, I'm a big fan of Razorwing Flocks, so obviously I hold this model uh, and its uh, its value on the tabletop in high regard. A lot of people don't. I think it's a very undervalued unit, though. I think that it has a lot of potential, especially because of the fact that it does open up those slotless units. You could take a single detachment and turn it into just nothing but beasts, and even if it's not tactically viable, that just the notion of that is hilarious to me, a single auxiliary detachment having uh, up to 10 units in it. So that's it for the Beastmaster unit analysis. I hope you found this video useful.